Hey, welcome back to my channel. Tara here. Thanks for tuning in. Today I thought I'd take you guys through my process for making a zine digitally through Illustrator. Um, I pretty much exclusively work in Illustrator from using my computer. <laughs> well, I'm always using my computer and that's why I work digitally. Um, my physical stuff is all upstairs from where my computer is, so I'm usually at my computer and not upstairs. Um, Anyway, so this is kind of my setup for my zine workspace. Um, you can pretty much disregard anything on the left, and then the right side is basically the page spreads. So I have them labeled the back front, 110, 92, 3, 8, 7, 4, and 5, and 6, and that's just the page number. I have it set up so when it prints double-sided, it prints properly because just, yeah, that's how it has to be set up. Um, and I basically have started a kind of yearly creative project where I wrap up my previous year. So I started in 2020 and um, it's just a zine about my 2020 year, like things I've listened to, movies I watched, TV, books, music, whatever. And then I'm, I did the same thing for 2021. Um, so basically to get started, I am just importing a bunch of different elements, like uh, things I have scanned in. I use Illustrator to trace things I scan in um, to make them vectors so I can manipulate them and use them in Illustrator uh, nicely. <laughs> um, this one is just like a grid paper that I scanned in and I'm trying to image trace it. Trace it. Um, unfortunately, the way I did the screen record, my menus were not visible, are not visible. So you kind of see my mouse like just doing crazy things and it's because I'm clicking through menus that you can't see. Uh, I have fixed that hopefully for later videos, so I apologize for that confusion. Um, this one actually confused me because typically when I do an image trace, the things I want to trace are black and the things that aren't being traced are white, but for some reason this one was the opposite. I don't. I honestly don't know why it happened this way, but I was so confused trying to figure out what was going on. Um, at the end of the day, it was just the grid lines were white and they should have been black, so I had to like reverse that. And I spent way too long trying to figure out why that was the case. And I'm trying to use like Illustrator's like select same feature. So in Illustrator, my favorite, honestly, one of like probably my maybe my second favorite feature is you can select the same like fill color, outline color, like stroke color, whatever. This is a really handy way to to select a bunch of objects that are not necessarily easy to select. Um, so I use that, I'm trying to figure that, using that and trying to figure out what's going on. Um, and if you're curious, my my top favorite feature of Illustrator is the recolor button because I can never decide on a color palette and I just love being able to click through and like have it randomize the colors for me and I don't have to do any of the work. And it's really, really great. You'll see me do that a lot in this. Um, but yeah, so I spent way too long on that and I wanted you guys to, feel and see my pain and try and figure out what I was doing wrong. But I got it. I got that grid. Uh, I like this grid because it's just, it's like, it's messy. It's not like totally perfect. Um, and then I have the same thing for a lined piece of paper. Image trace that. And you'll see I just import a lot of different things that I have already, like ripped paper scans that I've scanned in, already traced. I just have a whole digital library of things that I've like honestly been accumulating for probably the past 10-ish years. Um, at one point, I had scanned in literally every single like encyclopedia book page that I had um, because for a while there I, I was making actual stationary sets and stuff with digital collages and it was just nice to have everything digital. And uh, yeah, so I still use a lot of that stuff to this day. Um, I'm trying to focus more on making my own digital assets. Obviously things like pages out of a book, like I could potentially recreate that, but you know, I don't want to recreate the wheel. So I'm just going to use that. Um, and with this, I just make, like I make objects out of the different objects. So clipping masks are my friend. Um, it's really probably my, my third favorite feature of Illustrator, uh, where you just put a shape over an, a, a, another like image, object, or whatever, and you can cut that shape out basically of the, the thing that's underneath it. Um, so I use that a lot. And yeah, so I'm just kind of speeding things up here and just showing you 
how I work digitally. I always think it's really interesting how people do things digitally. I, I have struggled and I still struggle of like making my physical style like translate to digital because in my like analog collages, I use a lot of like textures, shapes, um, and just like just random bits of paper, lots of lots of ripped paper uh, and everything like that. And I just, yeah, I, I, it's really hard to translate that for me digitally, which seems weird because if that's my style, then like, how is that hard? But there's just so much more that goes into it to work digitally. Like there's a lot of things that are easier because you can manipulate things really easily. You can change the colors really easily. But also I think that is, it's kind of difficult because you do have too many choices. So like when I sit down and create something analog, like I have a limited amount of things that I can use, you know, colors I can use. Uh, but when I do things digitally, it's just like, oh my God, there's just too many, too many options. Um, and it's hard to visualize for me how it's going to actually look once it's printed. Um, I have no concept of like scale <laughs> or anything like that. I don't know how people honestly do it. And I, I do struggle with like creating texture. I imagine a lot of it is because I'm using Illustrator. So most of these are vector images, which, you know, they kind of, they have a weird like perfection to them. Like edges are, you know, typically like smooth. Um, and even like, like the grid is like, it's just, it's just too perfect, even though it's not perfect, if that makes any sense. I don't know. If you guys work digitally, I'd love to hear your thoughts and how you create texture mainly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I use, yeah, I use like uh, transparencies, masks, things like that uh, a lot. And just kind of, I pretty much self-taught. I mean, obviously I Google things if I'm like trying to do something super specific and I don't know how to do it. Or, you know, I, I've watched a few, or I watch videos on YouTube of like people doing things digitally and pick up, you know, what they do, how they do things and try and incorporate how I can do that in my, my own work. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of layers. I think also you don't get the same, like, obviously like 3D effect when you do layer. I mean, obviously like you could probably use like shadows and whatnot, but I'm way too stupid to be able to make that look okay. I, I see other people do it and it's just like, how do you make that look so realistic? Um, I have no idea. But I, I do just try and think about like, if I was going to sit down and do this on paper, how would this, how would I want this to look? And I just try to go from there. Um, I do like to use a lot of like tags and things in my, my work. Uh, the like washi tape, fishtail flag things and yeah. Um, create your own little shapes in Illustrator, which is fun. The shape creator tool, maybe my fourth favorite tool in Illustrator. It's just so, so fucking handy. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just really easy to make shapes out of other shapes. Um, and then I realized like, I do like things just to look a little bit wonky, like, like that little like scalloped edge that I created where it's not like totally perfect. It's just kind of cute. And then like the weird cut out fishtail where it's not, you know, a hundred, a hundred percent, like at the perfect angle. Um, but yeah. And like I said, I'm trying to make my own like patterns, um, and just like textures myself instead of just using things I download or like whatever. But I do use a lot of illustrators, uh, included patterns. They have a bunch of like security envelope patterns, which they're just genuinely really, really cool looking to me. And I like to use those a lot. Uh, and I use them a lot in this one here, this scene. And then the color, I changed the color. So like I said, the recolor tool is my top favorite tool of Illustrator. And you can see why, because I just can't ever decide on the color that I want to use. So when I first started, I had, I was just using random colors. I had no idea what I wanted. Uh, what I wanted it to look like. And then I decided on a palette, which is kind of like a, you know, muted pastel kind of vibe, I guess. Um, and then I'm just able to quickly recolor all those patterns. Like you can just click on them and recolor and use your select a palette that you want to work with. Um, yeah. And just working here, these are little blobs that I've drawn out and converted to vectors. And I think I realized here my margins or my guides weren't properly aligned. I don't know. At some point I realized that my guides weren't 
exactly center and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I did wrong, but I had to switch some stuff up. Um, but I had no idea like what I was going to call the zine. Obviously, I was going to have to do something with like 2021. Um, I had no idea the colors I was working with until now. Uh, the content, I had not decided on any content whatsoever. I just ran like I did this in 2020 and I think I probably thought I was going to do it for 2021, but I didn't make any specific plans to do it. And then like December rolled around and I was like, okay, I'm gonna make a zine. And then I just did this in like a week or so. Uh, and then I put a call out on Instagram of people who wanted to just receive this silly zine in the mail along with some stickers that I created for it too. Um, so if you want free stuff from me, like all you gotta do is follow me on Instagram or you know check my Instagram periodically. Like, <laughs> I don't know if you're not even a follower. Just check my Instagram. I'm constantly just giving things away because that's, I don't know. I make art, art, <laughs> we'll, we'll call it art. I make things and I want to share them with people and I work a full-time job in order to do so. So I don't make any money off of my art. Uh, and I kind of like it that way. Like there was a time in my life where I was like, I had my own little business and I was selling stuff on Etsy, like stationery and stuff. And like, I honestly, it wasn't, like, lucrative whatsoever. I still work full-time. But it was fun to, like, know that people were, like, purchasing my work and enjoying it. But it was just, ugh, I don't know. It was just, ugh. it's just so much responsibility. And then it, like, I don't know. It kind of takes the fun out of it for me, uh, which seems kind of, like, cliche to say. But I don't know. I just, like, I like being able to do things on my own pace and like like after I made this scene I don't think I created anything for like a few weeks and I was just totally beat like I <laughs> all of my creative brains was just gone um so you know just to know that I didn't have to like package anything and send it out and like I could just you know veg out and play video games and eat bad food and enjoy my life and not have to worry about like making sales or like promotion or anything. I don't know. I'm not set up for that. But I might revisit it this year. I don't know. I've been going back and forth if I wanted to start selling things. I think if anything, I'll probably be selling stickers. Because I do really like making stickers. And I finally have like a really good system for it. Now that I've abandoned Cricut. So we can talk about that some other day. Um, yeah, I actually did go on one vacation in 2021. Um, there was a lot of back and forth about it. I didn't really want to, I wasn't too comfortable traveling by plane, but it was only like an hour flight at least. So that was nice. Um, so I'm in New Brunswick and we went to Toronto. We had a flight, a flight credit that we had to use up because we had originally booked J a, a trip to Japan for 2021. Um, we had booked it like early 2020, hopeful that the pandemic would be done by, you know, the end of the year or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I did some lettering for Toronto with some highlighters and then I just scanned it and used the pen tool to outline it and create, recreate it, uh, in Illustrator. So I do that a lot and but yeah, so we did end up going to Toronto. Uh, I think we were there for just like four days. It was honestly miserable and not worth it. Um, thankfully, we did not get sick, which uh, I'm very pleased <laughs> with. Um, but we visited Niagara Falls, which is my favorite part. And then I also did see, or I went to the Toronto's first post office, which was really cool. But I felt like a super bird in there because there was nobody in there. And, and then I picked out a bunch of like postcards and stuff to buy. And then when I went to check out, like four other people ended up coming in just to use the post office. And this poor cashier was just like ringing everything up individually. Like I bought like, I, I bought like at least five to 10 postcards because I'm a hoarder of postcards. And she's just sitting there trying to like scan in everything. All these people are just trying to like drop off their stupid packages and I was just like this is awful and yeah so that was kind of miserable but the building's really cute um walking there was really cool I loved all the like street art graffiti um 
and just general like architecture was really cool to see. But the food wasn't as good as I was expecting. Like I had really high hopes because Fredericton is just like a shithole for food and restaurants. Like there's like I would say there's probably like two. Okay, maybe th I could probably count five like really good like locally owned places to eat uh, that I would like that I would you know I like to eat at but I don't know the food here is just not not ideal but maybe maybe it's just a Canadian thing maybe I'm just a lowly American with terrible taste buds I don't know but we ate a lot of food in Toronto and I didn't enjoy most of it <laughs> we did have a really nice like burrito uh, the first night there though and that was really nice not a lot of burrito options in Fredericton. Uh, I decided on a title for my zine, so I was trying to learn programming at this time that I was making the zine, and I was just like, oh, binary code, why not? So, yeah, probably super cliche, but I thought it looked kind of cute, and I like the way I made the cover. So, uh, yeah, that was pretty much, that was it. 2021 was so ordinary, like, our biggest thing was, you know, we obviously, we got vaccinated and we went on a vacation. Um, I am actually very glad that we went to Toronto when we did. It was like right before the new variant came out. Yeah, it was like November. So and now everything's gone to shit. And yeah, <laughs> we got in a little vacation. <laughs> I did also type out what I decided on for my pages. Um, and then I just added those there on the side so I could remember what I was doing. <laughs> I always type like little notes to myself when I'm working in Illustrator. Um, and I still ended up like fucking it up thinking I was working on one side when I should have been working on the other. But obviously it's really easy to just shift that all over. Um, this is my 2021 highlights. So just very boring. <laughs> uh, I don't know, it was four. Oh yeah, four years, I think we've been married, me and my husband. Must be. I don't know. Makes, seems right. Uh, and then three years for owning our house. Uh, two vaccines, I think, is the next one. This page, I think, I... I end up changing this one a bit because I didn't like that pattern paper. It's the only place I, I use that pattern paper or the painted paper in the background there. Oh yeah, and I've been living in Canada for three years and I am eligible for Canadian citizen, cit citizen, citizenship, uh, which may or may not happen because it's kind of pricey. I think it's like $600 and then I also have to take a test. So. Uh, I don't know. I'll probably, maybe, I don't know. I'll probably do it. Um, it's not, I mean, it really wouldn't make much of a difference. It's probably just more of a peace of mind thing for like traveling because then I wouldn't have to carry like additional documentation. Cause right now when I travel, like I have to carry my U S passport and then also my permanent resident card. And then especially with like COVID and stuff, I was really scared to, or nervous, not scared, but I was nervous to like travel to the states if I if I needed to because like I could obviously get into the states because I'm a citizen but like coming back into Canada as a permanent resident I don't know what my rights really are in that regard I'm sure I could figure it out but it would just be easier if I was an actual citizen and then I wouldn't have to worry about it so maybe this year I might look into doing that I don't know I don't know if they're like how things go with that as far as COVID is concerned you know everything is just everything's just up in the air anyway so what can you do uh, yep this is where I messed up where the movies was on the left side I'm, well I'm working on the left side even though it should be on the right side because I'm super smart and yeah I'm just putting this little spread together so I did movies and television no movies and books I don't know if I did TV. I must have. You know, I did. I don't know why. Oh, I guess top 10. So in 2021, my husband and I ended up watching a lot of movies that were released in 2021, which we don't normally do. Um, but there was a time period where we would just like watch a movie a day for like uh, a month or so. But there was kind of a lot of cute little 
movies that came out. Um, so I rated those. So that's just movies that were released in 2021. And then just all the books that I read. Uh, and then my little projects for the year. So patterns I created, stationery I created. Um, I did a lot of organizing and I'm still not even like done uh, with my mail. But I did finish my digital mail log and address book and it's been a fucking dream and I love everything about it. It's been really helpful for me to keep on top of like replying to people and just, I don't know, it's just been really nice. So my mail sent and mail received. I'm hoping to have a much larger sent number this year. Um, I'm getting back into post crossing. Um, so I'm going to try and send out post crossing at least monthly, like my fill, my fill. <laughs> however many I can send out uh so I did it in January I sent I can send 14 at a time I think um so I'm doing that then once that once everything gets received then I'm going to go in and send another 14 play some video games watch some tv in 2022 hopes and dreams uh I don't know there's not a lot that I I really hope for <laughs> Just, you know, I just enjoy my life. Just do things that I want to do and not try to have too much of a plan because I don't know. It's just, that's the way I live. Uh, yeah, I put Frank learn Spanish, me learn programming. I really want to go to Mexico, go to weekend road trips to Maine, get an electric vehicle. I doubt any of that's going to happen, but, you know, you got to gotta, gotta have some hopes, maybe. Hopes and or dreams. What is this last page? Oh, songs. Probably the most accomplishment of 2021 is just to how much music I listen to. Um, I just kind of listen to Spotify literally only when I'm at work. And I exclusively listen to the Discover Weekly playlist on Monday and then the Release Radar playlist on Friday. Um, so on Monday, like I'll listen to the playlist and then I'll like like the songs I like, don't like dislike the songs I don't like. And then I listen to it throughout the week and find like I listen to like each song multiple times to figure out if I actually really like it or not. Um, and then I at the end of every month, I create a playlist of all the songs that I really love. So I included two playlists with Spotify codes um, with the songs that I loved in 2021. One playlist is for songs released in 2021, and then the other is just the top songs that I liked all year, regardless of release date. Um, and here I'm just making clipping masks of every spread, uh, so I can easily just, uh, when I save, I save it as PDF, and then I print it. Um, so just clipping masks for each little page, and then I save as PDF. Um, oh yeah, I had to recreate that, because that's going to be double-sided, obviously, and not just like... <laughs> A bunch of weird little pages um so i just had to make that double-sided and then i'm like why is this not lining up because who knows i think i just had incorrect sizing i don't know what the heck happened there but it's like whatever's it's mostly bleed i have print everything with a bleed um so when i print i change my printer settings um depending on the print i do a test print to see if i need to adjust the contrast or anything print on matte paper make sure to select actual size when printing. So I just print that. Uh, I print the odd pages first and then I manually like flip them over, put them back in the rear tray of my printer to print on the other side because I can't print high quality double-sided on the printer. Um, but I will do a video of me like printing and cutting and just kind of showing you that process because it's, I don't know, it's different. Like it's just a whole different beast than once, once you're done with it digitally to like figure out how you're supposed to, you know, compile it, I guess. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about, uh, how I use Illustrator, if you want me to like make a video on something, the process or whatever, uh, just let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have. Thanks for watching. Bye.